So what is going on guys? And once again my patrons voted and this time we are going to see how to create an X-ray vision, which is such a cool technique. This is composed of three parts, a shader, some render features and a script to enable or disable the X-ray vision. And there's a lot of things you can do with this and it's used in many games, so I hope you enjoy it. And all of this is available on my Patreon page, as well as many other projects that you are going to get access to, in case you want to support us, links below. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. Let's get started with the shader. With right click we can create a blank shader graph, or an unlit graph, I'm going to rename it to X-Ray Shader Tooth, double click to open it up, and I'm going to duck the window around here, okay. So the first thing we need to do is tell it which target it's going to use. In this case, it's the universal, because we are in the universal render pipeline. This doesn't need to be influenced by light. Let's say it's unlit. And turn on. Allow material override, so in the inspector we can adjust a few more characteristics of this shader. In this simple shader, we want to start with the Fresnel effect. So we can get that glow all around the mesh we are going to use and we are going to multiply this with the color property but if we want to give it a flickering effect we need to multiply the Fresnel with something and that something it's a noise in this case a simple noise will do we can say the scale is 10 but we need to compact this simple noise in the y-axis and for that we can use a tiling and offset the tiling property will allow us to for example say the x is 0 0.5 and then crunch it in the y with a value of 30 for example and we get these horizontal lines which is exactly what we need so we have a few properties that we need to control in the inspector we can start with the final power for example with a default value of 2 now if you connect the simple noise to the multiply, as you can see, it influences the Fresnel, but we need something to control the amount of noise we want. So let's create a float for that, which is going to be a slider between 0 and 1. And to control the amount of noise we want in Fresnel, we can use a lerp node. The T value will blend between A and B. Once it gets closer to 1, it will be white, and when it's closer to 0, it gets black. So, in our case, we can say that the A option is without noise, the Fresnel only, and the B option can be the Fresnel completely influenced by the noise. And now we have this noise amount property that will control exactly that. And this now can be connected to the color, for example. We get a black preview because we need to say the color. We actually can say the mode, it's HDR first, and then we can say that default color is white, for example with alpha at 100. And by the way, this is going to be connected to the base color. Let's just set the alpha clip to 0. Now the cool thing is that the noise amount, as you can see, if we set it to 0 0.5, we only get a certain amount of noise, which is great. Let's create a few more props. There's another thing that it's going to be useful, which is how dense we want this simple noise to be. We can control it with the power node, for example, the B option in this case, as you can see, dissolves the simple noise. So that's another property that we can control in the inspector, for example, with a float, call it noise power, connect it here, default value of, let's say, 3. And then we can create a float property for the noise scale with a default value of 10. Now we are going to need a vector2 property for the noise tiling, which is 0 0.5 and 30. And we can already create a vector2 for the noise speed, since it's going to be useful to scroll this texture, to pan this texture. We have the offset value, as you can see, if we animate this, we get exactly that, a scrolling texture, and every time we need something to be animated in the shader, most of the times we use a time property. Multiply in this case with the noise speed vector 2, connected to offset, and that's it, we have everything we need in our shader to proceed to the rest of the tutorial. Let's just save up here in the save asset button, 
I'm gonna hide this window and then we can create a material out of the shader we just made. And the great thing about this technique is that we are not going to apply this material to a mesh. We are going to apply it to an entire layer. So now let's select one of the objects you have in your scene, go to the layer, add the layer and call it render above. For example, I'm going to switch and so you can see the effect in action. I'm going to switch Thunderlord here to the render above. And yes, I'm going to say change the layer of all the children of this object. And the magic happens in the forward render. If you cannot find your forward render, you can go to edit in project settings, go to graphics, select your universal render pipeline asset, select it. And the forward render is normally assigned here. And in the filtering, we are going to exclude the render above layer from being rendered. Don't worry about the shadows for now, we are going to fix them in a moment. As you can see, it's working, Tundalor disappeared. We are excluding this layer from being rendered. But now we are going to say we want to do something specific to the render above layer. So let's add the render feature, render object. We can call it the X-ray render feature. It's going to happen only after rendering the opacity. We can leave the queue as opaque, but matters now is in the layer mask. We are going to say, do this only to the render above layer, to everything that's inside that layer. And what's going to do is, it's going to render everything after the opaques. And if the depth of everything that is inside the render above layer is greater than any existing opaque object. In other words, it's going to render only if it's behind an object. So change the depth test to greater. You can disable write depth. Great, right? Now we just need to tell it with which material it's going to render all of the objects inside that layer. And guess what? We already have the material, so let's assign it and... Boom! Here we go. Really nice. Just need to make a few adjustments to that material. We can say it's transparent for the surface type and additive for the blending. And here we go, X-ray vision. Now it's a matter of playing with the color intensity, for example, 3.4. I'm gonna choose blue. Yeah, something like this looks nice. You can choose how much noise you want. Make it scroll as well in the Y axis. Nice, really nice. But it's still not visible from the other side. So we need to tell it that whenever it's not behind an object, to render normally. And we do it by adding a new render feature, render object. We can name this opaque, it's going to happen after rendering opaques. And we can override depth again, but leave it as it is, which is the normal setting. And now it's only going to happen to the render above layer. If you go watch behind the wall, you can see Thunderlord with its normal material. So as you can see, we are applying effects to a whole layer instead, which is so cool and opens up for so many possibilities. Like I said, I already used this before, a similar technique for the ground cracks tutorial. You can check it out as well, it's great with awesome results. So now to conclude this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how one could switch these layers via script. Because that's one way to do it, whenever you want to enable or disable the X-ray mode, you can switch the object to the render above layer in this case, for example. So here's what I did in a script. I have two public layer masks, one for the default layer and the other one for the X-ray layer. We have a private boolean to know if it is active or not. And then with type key, for example, we check if it is active. Then if it is, it's going to switch to the default layer. And the technique here is to use a logarithm with a base of two because the layer mask value outputs 2 raised to the power of the number of the layer. In this case, the layer is number 6, so it's 2 raised to the power of 6, which is 64. We do this for the parent object, we check if it has children. If it has, then we are going to recursively change all of the children layers to the X-ray layer. It's probably not wise to do this for a lot of objects, or objects with a lot of children. But yeah, that's basically it. And now every time I press tab, we enable or disable the X-ray vision. And that's, that's pretty cool. I think that's really nice. You can do a bunch of things with this and it's not that hard to implement.
If you want to get your hands on this project, I left a link below, it's available on my Patreon page as well as many other projects that you are going to get access to. A big thank you goes to each patron and a special quick shout out goes to the top type patrons which are Adrian Biedriski, Elak Frost, Albert Wagner, Austin Schneider, Kruby Dubidu, Derek Benson, Diego Marcos, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Eric Hudson, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindad, Joe's Game Show, Joan Estram, John Nix, Yulid Mayer, KC Miller, Leonardo Ferraz, Levin W, Little Tsai, Lovesta Posey, Maxim, Mograf Tech, Natsims, Oitsk, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Chow, Sharat Ravi Shanka, Sungyup Joe, Toasted Butter, Very Soon. Vlad Yakubiski, William Morris, and Ingo Das. Your support is super much appreciated, guys. And to anyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.